everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Civ Show Podcast, where we suck so you don't have to. I'm your host, Moisas. Raising Zozo. And Astagmus. I'm, I'm back, apparently. It's been a while. I feel like it's been forever. We have <laughs> not any, Has anything exciting been... happened in... Nothing at all. all. No, It's okay, all no. been unchanged. It's been an unchanging land of, of staleness and boredom. Yeah. Basically, yeah, no. Civ stopped when you went away, and I was away too. So Civ stopped entirely, and there's nothing new to report. So we're done for the week. Yeah, this, this, right. honestly, there's actually not even not, nothing happening today. So like, nothing we're just here to say hello day. to you guys. See you later. Bye. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to follow and subscribe. Yeah, follow and subscribe. <laughs> No, it's patch day, everybody! Holy crap, dude, the April patch has dropped. It is exciting. There's so much to go through. 3,200 and something words. Are you guys, do you, do you guys like English class? Do you like grading essays? Because we're about to grade one right now. Ready? Yep. Awesome. Also, right, I love grading it. essays, yes. I'm loving the very first part of the patch notes. Go through it, man. Hey, take thing, the lead. Man. So honestly, if like all the patches did were like, okay, man, we're gonna just give you guys a trebuchet, I would have been like, that's awesome. I, I and that that's like that's the best thing that could happen for the frontier pass. I'm wait I was waiting for this unit for like the <laughs> longest time. Um I, I don't even know what it does differently than the catapult or anything like that. I just want a trebuchet. Um I want to be able to hurl a 200 kilogram stone over uh 400 meters that's what i want to do um and and they're gonna let me do that in the game this sunday that's 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 all i care about so um i'm so happy that the trebuchet now so medieval unit catapult upgrade so you're gonna go from a catapult to the trebuchet um which of course is the siege promotion class uh it upgrades to the bombard so that makes complete sense since the um um it always felt kind of weird i like these new middle units because it always felt like there's a huge step up, right? Yeah. You went from like just throwing a rock at a wall to like basically <laughs> blasting it with a cannon, right? <laughs> so um, I like like these new middling units because it really gives a better seamless flow of, of things instead of going from like, you know, uh, chopping with swords to basically uh, uh, cosplaying as Grandmaster Chief, right? So, oh um, God. <laughs> uh, it's That's a, a little <laughs> much, but okay. <laughs> uh, hey, hyperbole is the is the language of of gamers. So basically, yeah. Um, but it's yeah, I really love that. Yeah. Uh, so I I just can't wait. I'm gonna my first act this Sunday is to try to build an army of trebuchets so oh that we can God. have so we can have a new uh, catapult thing that yeah, allows us yeah. to like think about it. So um, I'm gonna make armies of trebuchets. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> So, how do you feel? You're getting you're getting challenged right now. Well, if like I understand the army of catapults, but like I don't know if I can quite grasp an army of trebuchets. Um, it doesn't seem as impressive. It's closer to the appropriate era that you should have, you know, uh, mobilization. So, sorry, nystagmus. What uh, if what if I showed you guys an army of slingers or warriors? That'd be impressive. Army yeah. of slingers or warriors? Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 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 Army longer of scouts. Army of scouts. Yes. <laughs> Army of scouts. I don't think would be that tricky. Moy Moy because... makes an army of workers and breaks the game somehow. <laughs> you can't, you can't make an army of nine workers. Nine charges. It has nine charges. <laughs> that would that would actually be kind of cool if somehow you could Ugh. make an army of workers and then that you just get a bigger, a really and a bigger cool. group. And it's just Damn. like if they're in proximity to things, they can work on stuff. <laughs> but make it like themed. So it's like workers, but then like engineering team after that. And then, uh, pfft, I don't know. Well, now, what's what's after know, that? Shoot, with I don't know. That, you know, Carl can take this and make the Frontier Pass 2, and where they'll introduce the armies of civilian units. Because we came up with that right now. And he's going to be like, oh my God, it's genius. <laughs> I'm going to propose it and everyone will think I'm a genius. Like all our other <laughs> ideas. <laughs> we have splendid ideas. So don't, we don't, do. don't let we yourself do. believe that we don't. We're splendid people. Anyways, we have a lot to go through, so let's not waste too much time. You're the one wasting wasting time. time. <laughs> I want to talk about men at arms. Go for it, man. Go for it. Men at arms. There are men at arms in here. 
That was a lame Simpsons reference. Um, <laughs> Ms. Davis knows the exact episode I was referring to. Men alive? There are men alive? Yeah, uh, burns, man, uh, burns is a uh, oil uh, pump, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, Man at Arms, the macemen of Civ Six, finally exist. Uh, so no longer do we go from swordmen to musketeers, from swords to guns. Now we've got this middleman, the medieval era swordman upgrade for the melee promotion class that also upgrades into the musketeer so now we actually have a middle phase here medieval times have never been wilder than they are <laughs> in the new Civ frontier pass i guess is this is this is post frontier pass eh? technically yeah this Would is well this post? is the final one so they, oh, is this the I final wonder, the final frontier pass update okay, okay. the final okay. frontier well, final new frontier explains... pass update that explains that uh, unique units that will upgrade into this unit, the Roman now, Legion, Congolese uh, Memba, the Macedon uh, Hypatist, hypa, hypa, the Persian <laughs> Immortal, the Mori Tawa, and the Gaelic uh, Gestai. I guess, was that entertaining for you guys? I wish I could butcher so many words oh back to back. Oh my god. So you now, one of all them of those right. units yeah, you're one of them right. right. All of the units that I just mentioned, they're all uh, man-at-arms. So all of the swordmen can upgrade into those. They're now the middleman, um, and all of those can upgrade into the musketmen. Okay, wait. I think um, you. I don't think you said that no, right. No, you mixed it up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one thing I always wanted to talk about was... That will upgrade indirect, into this unit. Into this yeah. unit so, indirectly. Like do these middling units indirectly nerf or make them less powerful than civilizations that have special units that are medieval units. So for no, example, it, it doesn't. Know, my example would be the, the Japanese samurai, which normally would only fight swordsmen, right? Because it's a medieval unit. So not a lot of everyone gets musket men in time, right? But now there's a middling unit that's a little bit more powerful. So maybe it doesn't make by comparison. Uh, I know, I, I know, Carl, you took an account, but I just want, I know it's on people's minds. So we actually broach it, right? So, <laughs> So I, my mix, sorry, that I, I, Carl. the, the second shadow. part of this is you, unique units now replacing this unit are the Berserker Samurai and uh, the, the Kufser or whatever. Kevser, uh, Kevser, uh, get I it right. Say, Kufser. Got the Georgian Kufser. Kevser. Georgian Kufser coming to you live it, representing the oh medieval man at arms, the Kufser. Anyways, those are all replaced. But I hear what Astagmus is saying, you know, do these guys get a little crappier now that, uh, and I, I imagine the answer is no. It's been well play tested and your fears are unfounded, um, Nystagmus. That's, well, that's my guess. So they Because they buffed... made Swordsman weaker and they, and I know that they made Swordsman Not slightly weaker. Not ne necessarily. They buffed every unique unit up by three points. So like everybody okay. just has every so they just made everybody's unique unit just better. So that's how they solved it. Uh, they, it we'll go into specifics later. They they mention it later. So uh, that's the time to do that. So then we have the line infantry, the the unit before the infantry that comes out in the modern era. So this comes out in the industrial <laughs> era, and it upgrades it to infantry. It upgrades from a conquistador which can turn into a line infantry, and a Janissary, which replaces the Musketmen, turns into a line infantry. Uh, these unique units also are replaced by Imperial, Guard Imperial, French, and the English Redcoats. So those will replace the line infantry. That's it, man. Uh, you guys ready to go into the maps? There's two new maps as well. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about them too. Are we going to try these maps? We, we have to, right? We have to. So yeah. the first one is the Mediterranean and the TSL. True Start Location Mediterranean. I know we have some pretty big fans of True Start Mediterranean. I think, Zoe, you were really excited about this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, for sure. As long as it's good. It's got to be good, Moy. What, no what defines good? 
my beef with most of the past European style maps is there was just way too much not Europe or like Eastern Europe, you know, and to the point that it just it, it really the Europe map was like the small bowl of interest and then this gigantic plane of boredom. Um, and, uh, I can't you know, that, at least that's the Europe. Hey, that guy, map. that that's gigantic plane of boredom is Russia. You really pay sure. your respect. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I would have been fine if they stopped at like the Balkans and I don't know. Uh, so hopefully this map though, with Mediterranean, it's like, going to be on huge too, right? So hopefully no. it's detailed. No. Huge is the earth. My guy, you're way ahead. Whoa, no, we're dude. at Mediterranean. No, this, is like, this is a large map. Way ahead. One you're ahead. You're way ahead. You're way ahead, bro. Whatever. Bro, large ahead. map, huge map. It's like what? Two two squares difference. What? Something uh, like that between a huge and a and a. It's like so. It's large as ten sieves. Huge as twelve sieves. I mean map size. I mean map size. It's it, yeah. it, it, it's significant, but anyways, fine, whatever. Large map, great. And then uh, we have the TSL huge Earth map right after that so there's been pictures of like atlantis between the two continents of of north america and europe but like they claim on their dev stream they claim i'm doing air quotes for the people listening claim uh that there's nothing there but it's clearly on the on the preview picture do do, do you guys think what, what do you guys think it's gonna be there like legit is it do you think there's gonna do you think they implemented some sort of easter egg to put atlantis in there then what do you think would even happen uh well Aquaman? first of all it's debatable <laughs> more <laughs> where atlantis is actually located some people put it past the uh arms of hercules the pillars of hercules where others suggest it may be between the north and, and north america and europe but mm. even further studies have confirmed that it may have, in fact, be Antarctica. Now, I'm not saying that it's aliens, but it's aliens. I heard and, that uh, of course, in, Antarctica. Uh, in the uh, Antarctica Atlantean version, that's when the predator and the alien uh, yeah. show up every so often to fight each other in ritual <laughs> combat. So, obviously, more you wanted aliens in Civ, that's what this is all about. Oh, my God. What is with you yeah. two guys? You guys are so related. <laughs> <laughs> needless anyway. to say boy these maps are going to be really great and we're looking forward to trying them out yes okay now to the fun stuff the persive change there's a lot that goes in here Z uh uh nystagmus you go first i'll go second zo you can go third sure go from there. aztecs oh give me the one where i'm gonna butcher all the names now of stuff right yeah. so I'm not gonna be able to... <laughs> the uh telachi or Tlachi, uh, Tlachi, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Tlachli? Tlachli. Yeah. I don't know. Um, they added plus one culture. Um, in the Rise and Fall and Gathering Storm uh, part of it, they added plus two culture. So, it's, so does that uh, mean the Rise plus three culture overall? Because that's pretty decent. That's a lot. Yeah. It's not insignificant, especially for a... Doubled or tripled first culture. Right away. I don't, think, I don't <laughs> even think that has a prerequisite. It? Well, it's it's um it's the it replaces Wilbur, the arena, right? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's in the entertainment oh, 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 complex, which is why oh, it's like not a. It, okay, this is debatably the worst, tie uh, the unique infrastructure in the game, before. Right. So now it gives right. you like plus one amenity from entertainment, and then also now plus three supposedly culture. So that's that's like that's equivalent to. Actually, I think that's more than, than an amphitheater. An amphitheater gives you two, but the, the, it gets upgraded with city-states. But it, initially, it only gives you two, so it's better than the first building in the theater square. Think about that. Hmm? Riddle me this. Yeah, so Next you have, up. You have just another opportunity to get culture. If you get two districts, I can give you lots of culture, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, next up, we have Australia. Australia just had the only change that they made because they're in, incredibly good is that they have a tier two start bias to coast. Tier two, base the best tier you can get is tier one. That means you're almost guaranteed it. So tier two is pretty good. They have a high priority for the coast. That means that they will have more 
uh, breathtaking tiles for them to put their districts on. So it's going to be a buff to the Australia simming person. Uh, not looking forward to play someone playing Australia. If Peppermint Butler plays Australia in his life, I think we'd all die very fast. Yeah. I think we'd all die if Peppermint Butler played any Civ against any one of us playing any other Civ. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure, like, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Like, I can get Russia and he can get, you know, Georgia or something like that, and I'm gonna get. Hey, like, don't crushed. leave Georgia alone, man. They made changes <laughs> to her too. Uh, and Zoe, what did they do to what did they do to you? Huh? What they do to me? We kind of discussed yeah. this on uh, last week. Um, so Canada, Gathering Storms has now the best West, the best, the last best West. Increase the yields of mines and lumber mills on snow tundra and snow hills and tundra hills to plus two. So that's an ad- additional plus one from their original one. Uh, and then increase the yield of campuses on these terrains camps, by, to camps, 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 camps. I was all, like, when I first read a campus, I didn't notice anything about campuses, uh, camps, <laughs> uh, to plus two food. And then farms now provide plus two food on these terrains as well. Ooh, so yeah. when you're building your tundra farms, they'll now actually be like a grassland instead of, no, they're uh, better. They're better. Have you built a farm on tundra yet? Have you played? No. Like oh. I, I haven't had a chance to build it on. Oh, it yet. dude, it has four food. Four food. Four food. It goes from one go. to four. And the pretty, farm adds three food total. It's so not plus two. Impressive. It's plus two from the original plus so those, one. So uh, plus three. <laughs> famous, uh, those famous uh, large uh, Canadian cities in the north. Yeah, yes. man. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> you get a farming triangle for in in, in tundra, dude. That is. An incredible amount. I think it's like seven food each farm. You just build three farms and your like your city can get up to like how much population is that? Like fifteen, maybe fourteen from just three farms. Woo. It's really good. It's really not good. insignificant. Arguably better than Russia. It I, I actually I would uh that's a good argument now. Yeah, I okay, you win. Yeah, now now Canada isn't just like it's actually like a true tundra tundra ship sip now. Yeah, right? like yeah. So that's that's good. The Stagmus, yeah. who's next? So China, so China, um, the dynastic circle. So when completing a wonder now, instead of receiving a random eureka, I think before it was like from anywhere, right? Like anywhere along the tech tree. Um, now you get the eureka and inspiration from the era of the wonder that you build. So they used to not even have get a Eureka from building a wonder. So that's that's the new part. Oh, I thought was it or was it like a leader bonus? I think it was Kublai Khan, right? That got the Eureka from build, so, from building a wonder. Okay, here we go. Kin Shi Huang, he can use builder charges to the production of ancient and classical era wonders. So he can build wonders faster than anybody in the game. In the ancient classical era because he can put build charges into it so now whenever he builds a wonder successfully he gets a eureka or an inspiration and from being china his inspirations and eurekas are 10 percent better than everybody else's in the game so they added the part where if you build a wonder you get a eureka that's the new part it's a big change guys come on there's yeah. no words what's going on it's uh significant um you know it gives oh, china yeah, a reason he gets the random eureka kubla khan was when he established the trading post my yes. bad i thought that was when he built the wonder my bad okay i messed this that is up a big, this is a big deal man every wonder if you're if you're china and you're, you're like you can almost guarantee yourself a lot of the ancient and classical era wonders just from build charges and then it, you just build wonders every part of the game that's what you're doing is trying to wonder 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 you don't need to build science because you can just get so many eurekas maybe a couple but come on guys this is a big deal yeah but now but now canada is better at building wonders so they're going to steal all of those from china <laughs> <laughs> because of work ethic well that and canada has now got some pretty crazy production and true, the food true. to actually utilize those tiles right true. so i okay. think you're gonna see uh canada rising 
to the occasion for culture challenge. And obviously China is another culture sieve. Uh, so these two are going to, they're going to duke it out. Uh, <laughs> China doesn't really, other than its early bonuses, doesn't have anything intrinsically like we're great at building wonders, right? Like all they get is the first well, the two eras. Is. Sure. For the first two eras. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, there's after nothing. That, yeah. In, yeah, that's like true. they that's true. have to rely on maybe whatever bonuses they're getting from those wonders. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Canada, in theory, is snowballing, you know, pun intended, um, <laughs> for their productivity and wonder building. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Cool. And builders uh, still do cost uh, 50 production, right? So, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you can easily you, you, there's a there's a card where you can like there's two economic cards one where you can get more pr production towards builders and another one where you can get more production towards wonders and so both of those stacks so even when you put the production into wonders if you have that card it increases it and then like you also have more production into builders or you're just prioritizing builders as china that's kind of what you do like you 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 take a risk you don't build as much military but you're just building wonders and builders it's, yeah it's a trade-off Next, we have France. France, the they changed the chateau. So the chateau now uh, gives you plus two culture and plus one gold at base. Uh, it gives you plus one culture for every adjacent wonder, increasing to plus two with flight. And it gives you plus two gold for being next to a river. So there's the catch. It used to be you can only place it next to a river and you can place as many as you want across the river. Now you can only build it next to bonus or luxury resources and you can't build them adjacent to each other. It has to be every other tile. So it's both a weird like buff and nerf at the same time. I well, think you could just spam them, right? Like you just spam them like crazy. And the, only along the river. That's it. The, the requirement is it had to be next to a river. So now, like, you, I mean, I don't know if hypothetically you can build more of these or less of these because since it's next to any bonus resource and any luxury resources, those are pretty easy to come. It could be anything, right? Like, come on, you're just, you can just put three around each, each one. It's still a lot. So I, I, maybe it's less overall. So, like, the, you get less tourism from it. That's my guess. And then instead, you get more, uh, well, actually, it has to if it you have to have it next to a river to get the plus two gold. So it's like what plus two culture plus three gold. Yeah, I don't know. It's like both a nerf and a buff. I don't know how to determine this one. It's it's you build less, but they can it's, be um, better. It changes to it make it you need peppermint butler um, level city planning oh, um, to like, take full advantage of it basically because <laughs> you also get the bonuses for being next to a wonder. Mm -hmm. Right, it's true. And so you gotta like plan that out. Um, like, which wonders can you build? Can you build them next to the bonus luxury resources or next to the river as well? Great Zimbabwe, um, great example. Right. So, um, yeah. So you just need to you need to uh, uh, tap into your inner peppermint butler um, <laughs> and and be able to plan that city around that. So, uh, so let's go go Georgia. Okay, Sarge. It's all everything <laughs> everything you could possibly want. For now, that this this high tier Meta Knight tier Civ, uh, we got <laughs> glory to the world, kingdom and faith. No longer receives plus one hundred percent faith for ten turns after declaring a protectorate war. Instead, combat victories provide faith equal to fifty percent of the combat strength of the defeated unit. Okay, so what a warrior is what 25? 20, 20, 20, 20, I think, 20, yeah, 25. I think 25. I think that's right. Um, so no, 20, 20, it's 20, 100%, 20, I think it is 100%. 20%. So, uh, maybe we we're saying maybe we'll see people take that pantheon. Um, presuming that defeated unit counts as a barbarian unit, counts as defeated unit that they give you. A bonus plus fifty. So you'd be getting, you know, early on that could be a lot of faith. Very That's a lot rapidly. of faith. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a zombie game, if the zombies count. Um <laughs> yeah, that 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 could be a ridiculous amount of faith. Yeah. You, so, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. I I, I in like zombie mode, you can use that faith to pray for the zombies to go away. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're gonna do. Circle. 
I, I like anything that's a static bonus over one that, you know, like plus 100 faith for 10 turns. <laughs> How hard is it to cast a protector at war, right? Like, Cassie right, Bell is so protector at war. Don't they have to, like, be at war with, like, one of your city states or something like that? Yeah, yeah. You have to sue yeah. the city state, and then someone has to declare war on the city state, and then you have to declare war on the other sieve, which you don't always want to do, but you have to do it for a protector at war. So now yeah. they get that 100% faith from Golden Ages. So whenever they're in a Golden Age, they get 100% faith from their walls. So just plus Thank 8 you. faith instead of plus 4 faith, essentially. Still good. Yeah, Still nice. really good. Still good. And that, uh, that ability is fun because it'll it lasts the whole game, right? Every yeah. time they're, they're getting them. And, you know, units get stronger. So, yeah. There you go. Georgia. The Stangmas go through Germany. Yeah. So Germany, well, not a whole lot here changing for no. Germany. Well, can't you can't change too much with perfection, right? So, <laughs> um, and so uh, rivers are now a tier five start bias. So they used uh, to not have one at all. So they just yeah, like, all right, here so you go. They just want, slightly want more of a river, I guess. Yeah. Um, so now there's a little bit of a chance that they spawn next to a river. That makes sense because like there's like three major rivers in Germany. <laughs> like um and so it makes sense to have at least some sort of uh start bias for for a river for that reason yeah and plus when they're, when they're building commercial hubs right they want to build commercial hubs because the hansa when it's adjacent to a commercial hub gets plus two adjacency See, bonus i look at it i look at it from a historical perspective uh, whether or not yeah it's really historical <laughs> i look at it from a game perspective what does it give you is it good is it good I appreciate that about you, though. Uh, tier then, 5, though, is still pretty low, isn't it? It's very low. It's the lowest tier you can go without having a tier at all. So Next, you're we have, saying there's a chance. There's a chance, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next, we have Greece. So now, uh, they added plus 1 combat strength for every military policy card that is slotted. This is really interesting. Because you can slot in all of your military ones that give you bonus strength anyway and then you're getting plus one military strength per card so if you slot in if you're in Mo i don't remember what the new monarchy is anymore but the old monarchy with three military slots <laughs> and two wild card if you slot in five military slots plus five combat strength to everything take that simon bolivar there's a new powerhouse in this game and her name is gorgo this is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. yeah, like even just right off the bat, uh all things being equal, that plus 1, you know, that that's a plus 6 now for your uh, barbarian attack. Um but then, you know, wild cards, they get a wild card, I believe, right? They get an extra wild card. They do. So they yes, set, Greece gets an extra set, wild card. If they set that to military policy, mm -hmm. they get this, right? Um, so, you know, once you get your political philosophy, you're, you're easily plus four, you can get plus four to oligarchy, I believe, to, uh, to, yeah, to yeah, military absolutely. from that Dude, and then wow. two wild cards, like, what? that's Whoa. a plus four to all your units, like, right away. And then um, hoplites give you plus ten for having two adjacent to each other, and plus they're yeah. really good anyway. Oh my! And yeah. then you have great general. Oh my God! So what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So the math is favoring the Greeks. Uh, it would appear this day, uh, and more and even more reason to grab your wild cards and extra military slot policies for your your government. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's probably up to a plus ten in the end, something like that. Um, uh. I, Sure. I, I'm like with author authoritarian and and uh, with a couple wonders. Well, oh yeah, oligarchy gives you like plus four anyway, right? So then plus four from that, and then you're getting plus another plus four from all the cards. That's plus eight, plus eight combat strength in the freaking classical era. Holy crap, dude, that's insane. Yeah. Gorgo's a force, man. This is gonna be so tough. And this is this is something that scales the whole game. Whole so game. the whole game. Whole and game. it just gets better and better and better. Wow. I'm so excited. Yeah. So that should be good to see. Uh, uh who's next? I think I am. I think I'm next. Um no, I, 
I could have no? sworn it was Zoe. Or Zoe did Greece? Yeah, Zoe did Greece. Uh, I did, oh, I no, did no, Georgia. I did yeah, I did Greece. Okay, Zoe, you're up. My bad. It is me. Okay. So this is actually pretty significant uh, in hindsight. The Inca, uh, the Inca and the Maya, I think, are both significant. Um, so they have three new additions. So first of all, we've got the Kopak Nan. This is a leader ability. Plus one additional productions to mountains when the game reaches the industrial era. So that's pretty cool. Like that's the awesome. mountains. Yeah, the mountains start at what plus plus two, two and and three food or something or two. No food? zero food, but every terrace farm you put around it, I think it gives it one food right. or two food. Right. Um. So yeah, that's uh, that's not insignificant. That's like that's the a big. That's like a plus what thirty three percent bonus basically, right? Um, to to your mountain production. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're putting preserves on those too. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, Inca yeah, preserves, it, baby. It can get Let's pretty go. crazy. I think this is their reward for taking away the uh, goddess. Or maybe, whatever. maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, Good point. This is probably even more significant. So in- yes. Inca Terrace Farm now gives you the full housing plus one housing, no longer. Point five. So yeah, every dude. parent wow. farm. I think that is important because uh especially with the, this being, you know, they've upped the tier for the mountain, but you have a lot of mountains when you're the Inca. Uh so you're not having as much room for those Terrence farms. You don't have as much room for housing. Uh you need housing. So um and the and the Inca to me they 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 literally live high, right? They're mm-hmm. they're one of the high rise zips. Um, <laughs> high altitudes, so no, yeah. No pun intended, yeah. So I like the that it's a simple. Um, give them the housing bonus, so they're, they're they can actually get to the size where they're actually utilizing these mountains. Um, so yeah, I think that's not insignificant. I, I for for what the Inca are all about, those are two pretty big advantages. Yeah, that's a big one for sure, for sure. Plus one housing, holy moly! Plus one full, full plus one I housing. I know, man. You know, so whenever uh, a farm gives you a full housing, it adds up very rapidly. Yeah, uh, for and sure. Because they're so, you know, like again, a proper Inca is going to have like what five or six mountain tiles, maybe in any given city. Mm-hmm. Like if it's if it's if it has the bias that it's supposed to, that's a lot of tiles you're not you're not able to use, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so. So yeah, not insignificant. Not like Japan. <laughs> <laughs> You're skipping that last point for Inca. There's one more. I said that. I added. I said, and when you add to it that the mountains uh, are now tier two starting bias, right? Oh, so you like snuck it in that, there. Oh, I was saying that like how these all kind of meld together. Okay, you're, my you're bad. Very my likely bad. to have lots and lots of mountains, but yeah, I don't know what their original bias was, but now it's one more closer to having that you surrounded by mountains entirely like you see every now and then <laughs> there's no way that to start <laughs> All right, um, yeah yeah so for japan i i seem to be i add a lot to the conversation here for all my the ones i'm randomly getting here <laughs> so uh uh japan uh coast tiles are now a tier three star bias um, Yay. Okay. um so I don't know what they were before. Were they like a tier four? I guess I or... honestly have no idea. Just this, this, uh, let's just assume that they made it where they're more likely ne- uh, to spawn to coast. Let's just assume that and, and clap. It makes total sense and move because on. It, it takes advantage of their one advantage, like their one thing, like one it's, of their powers. Just the it's hurricanes, a, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but like their coastal stuff's huge. Yeah, their it, districts yeah, it get massive if they're by the coast, right? Yeah. Uh, next, we have the Kumai, the Kymer. Uh, that's how I used to pronounce it until I learned it's pronounced Kumai. Oh, my God. This is a huge one. This is a huge one. <sighs> I'm most excited about this one. Now, we have the Grand Berets. So what they used to do was they used to give your missionaries the martyr ability. You, you, you would kill them, and they would generate you a relic. However, it was too niche of a... Uh, a problem i guess if one missionaries can't initiate religious combat so you need to put them in the field and then wait for somebody to then bring an apostle and then kill it so it was kind of weird so they got rid of that now uh 
that's the i'm sorry i i mixed this up last week too that's the prasad i'm just gonna go straight to the prasad it replaces the temple it generates plus six faith and you get 0.5 culture for every population wow and you receive plus 10 tourism per turn in cities with 10 population and with cities with 20 population you get 20 tourism from the from the from the Prasad. That's significant. And they have so many ways to get to 20 population. They have the Grand Berets. Cities with an aqueduct receive plus one amenity from entertainment. They had that before. And this is new. Plus one faith for every production or population. So they get plus one faith from every population and 0.5 culture for every population. Keep this in mind. Farms provide plus two food if they're adjacent to an aqueduct and plus one faith if adjacent to a holy site. So your f these farms are even better. Bigger food, right? Bigger population. But wait, let's get more into how they can grow their population. But wait, there, there's more. There's more. <laughs> wait, if you call now, we'll include this. The monasteries of the king. Holy sites are now granted a major adjacency bonus when next to a river. They culture bomb when they're placed. And this is huge. Their food is equal to the adjacency bonus of the faith. So you put down a plus four faith holy site. Boom. Plus four food as well. Just like that. And if it's next to a river, you get plus two housing. So more housing, more food, more population. But wait, there's more. There's more. You pair this up with River Goddess. That's plus two housing and plus two amenities right there. And that's plus four housing overall. Plus two amenities. Plus one if you get an, if an aqueduct. All that population generating all of that faith, all of that culture. And the Kamai is the king of tall sieves now i don't care what you say i i, I you can one city challenge with kumai probably no problem easy as pie let alone if they get four five six eight cities if they get eight cities just count yourself out they've already won if they get eight cities wow uh, they went from dumpster fire to grand pumba is that what you're saying oh yeah they're they're grand pumba dude uh, I'm very excited to try them out, uh, especially on the Civ show. I have I so many ideas, so many ideas that I need to implement. So uh, I call Kamai next time we're playing. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and, right. and they're available. Yeah, yeah, I call Kamai. Noted. Next up, Stagmus. Next, I thought it was Zoe's next. No, I'm, I'm next. Oh, yeah, you got Damn you it. got too excited. <sighs> I mean, uh, so the Congo, their uh, their Nissus, their relics, artifacts, and sculptures, also give plus one faith, and they removed great writer from this additional great per people point. Removed great writers from his additional great people points. He used to he used so, to generate more great writer points. So now they got rid of okay. that. Yeah. Okay, so just everything's uh, plus one faith, and then they nerfed it a bit. Uh, so I'm guessing they were finding Congo maybe a little problematic with uh, if they nerfed things slightly, but otherwise didn't change them that much. It sounds like you've never played the Congo. Is this true? Mm, no, I don't think I have. I, okay. I, I just know that you've played them, and they're like crazy culture. This makes sense of why this is not a big deal for you. I got, got it. it. Right. <laughs> no, this is a, they, they, it's kind of a, they used to generate like a crazy amount of great people, right? That's their stick, like Brazil, right? Like Brazil and uh, Congo were like the the great people generation. They would have so many writers, so many musicians, so many artists. So they removed that because like, okay, you guys are earning too much. We're gonna take rid get rid of it, but in return, we'll give you plus one faith additionally to your relics, artifacts, and sculptures, which they already get like food production and gold from those three things so now it's like oh and you get another faith that's so that's what that is there you go nice that's the significance that's that, awesome <laughs> it's, a, it's a nerf zo sort of it's like a both it's, it's like a favorite, balance it's your favorite sieve though it's your favorite sieve yeah now nostagnus 
Exactly. Of course, you got this plan. Carl in there saying this helps the AI because it doesn't fill the wild card slots with writings which don't synergize with the rest of the kit. Is there a crazy? Yeah, I agree. It is crazy how much they had sitting around. (laughs) Sideways (laughs) nerf. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's a sideways nerf. So, um, Korea uh, in the Three Kingdoms. So, uh, mines now receive plus one science for each adjacent Seiwan district. And farms also receive plus one food for uh, adjacent to the CO one district as well. So kind of um, um, boosting mm-hmm. their their special district there. Um, one for the science, which is what Korea is known for, and also giving a little bit of extra food probably now, just because um, wanted to give it a little bit of an extra growth. So I think it'd be very interesting as well, since you you definitely want to be near mountains, right? As Korea, no, uh, no, no, well, no, no, no. You want. Want right, no, no, they want hills. Yes. Hills, right. yeah, hills. Yeah, yeah, hills. And so, they want to be isolated um, next to no other districts. Because that means that you want to be able to, they always wanted to be near hills anyway. So then that takes advantage of that ability. Mm-hmm. You, you can build a lot of mines. Yep. So, so now, like, if, if your mine is next to two Sayawans, it gets plus two science. It used to only get plus one, no matter how many Sayawans it was beside. But now it's for each, each adjacent Sayawan. So they boosted it, just made it a little bit better. It's a Korea buff, believe it or not. They buffed Korea, guys. They thought they, Korea wasn't good enough. They buffed her. So, like, next time when we're playing with uh, Unspot and you're by yourself on a continent and stuff, Shoot. Um, will your game be better no. than, than that game? So, you know, will, will you have um, um, uh, the... Uh, Maori out science you somehow, even though they got their capital taken over and they had to move right. to the other side of the map. <laughs> okay, that's a okay. very specific example. No, no, and he's absolutely right. Yeah, no, like you know what? I got. I think that was the last time, other than the one that just happened. Uh, me and Zo were on a team, and yeah, didn't end up well. <laughs> I let Zo die. I couldn't do I, anything. I, it's too many bars. I couldn't do anything. I'm so sorry, so you want uh, turn anyway. turn fifty on online speed, uh Korea science uh under fifty. Class it's like sta- it's standard. Um it's the standard of standard moves for Korea. So <laughs> just 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 let it die. Just let it die. Okay? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I made a mistake. Just let's move on. Uh, Mapuche. Mapuche. Uh Nisimus, why don't you go through Mapuche? Because you haven't read a long one in a bit. Just just take it. It's, it's yours. Uh, hello? No? Nystagmus, he's letting you do it. Oh, I, think, I, I think he said Zo. Uh, zo uh, no, I said Nystagmus. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I, I missed I missed it then. Because I, I didn't think I was going to go twice in a row, right? So you haven't uh, had a long one. You've, had, you've complained about all your short ones. Here you go. Boom. Papuche, yours. Right. I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm a man of few words. Any questions? Um, <laughs> for the Mapuche uh, Tuke, uh, cities with an established government provide plus 5% culture, plus 5% production, and plus 10% combat experience towards all units trained in the city. These numbers are tripled in cities not founded by the Mapuche. Well, that's that's interesting. Uh, all cities within <laughs> nine piles of the city with your governor gain plus four loyalty towards your civilization. Well, that's really nice. <laughs> this is the first time you're reading Mapuche, right? You never, you didn't. You didn't see the watch. You didn't watch the video, right? This is like the first time you're reading this, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, first keep going. This is, they, they're nuts. The Mapuche's nuts. Just keep going. <laughs> okay, that, that's obviously like uh, take over cities, basically, and yeah. it's going to be hard to to switch loyalty from them. Uh, Swift Hawk plus ten combat strength when fighting free cities or civilizations that are in golden or heroic ages. Defeating an enemy unit within the borders of an enemy city causes that city to lose 20 loyalty and 40 loyalty if that player is in a golden or heroic age. Wow. 40 <laughs> loyalty. 40. What? <laughs> and, and then lastly, uh, the, the chemimal, uh added plus one production. Yeah. So that also uh, gives you culture equal to th- 75% of the appeal. And now it gives you plus one production. So it's like, yeah, now it's not like just culture. You get a little bit of something else too. A little bit of production. Here you go. Just make this tile a little bit better. What do you think? What do you think of Mapuche? The Sagmus? <coughs> so, so, uh, so here's, here's like what I, the thing, the mechanism I'm thinking is, right? So just say you're attacking somebody, right? 
and you're defeating an enemy unit within the borders of an enemy city, right? Mm -hmm. It causes the city to lose loyalty. Is so does that mean like it's possible like while you're sieging a city, you just get it to flip into a free city? No, because it needs to have it needs to meet two conditions. It needs to meet the condition of having negative loyalty per turn and having zero loyalty. So because it's not having negative loyalty per turn, it will not flip to a free city, even if you keep going with uh, loyalty it's the same thing with void singers if you do like 20 for whatever reason 20 uh cultists on one city in the same turn it doesn't flip because so it doesn't have negative loyalty per, i'm per guessing turn. you guys want to like play a game where one of you is mampucci and then the other person's like eleanor yeah yeah I yeah see, right? yeah and then and so you can lower the so you use mampucci kind of like cultists that are like not like awesome cultists basically yeah, and lower the lower the uh, lower the loyalty, so then Eleanor can put pressure on the cities and flip them. Yeah, bingo. Okay, that's the plan. So yeah, we're gonna restart our game with bows. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, I wonder how it would actually play out though. Like as as you're playing though, right? Like, yeah, because just say you're not using it with Eleanor, right? So you're making the city lose mm -hmm. loyalty. I guess it's also that. It decreases the city defense strength because the city's becoming unhappy. Not necessarily. So the way loyalty works is just based to your yields. So if you have, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it goes by this. If you have 80 or less loyalty, you lose 25% of all your yields. Gold, faith, science, culture, food, whatever, everything. 20, yeah. Minus 25%. If it's less than 50 it's less than 50% to all those num uh, things as well. Less than 75 is 25% to all those. So if you just bash a guy, kill a couple of units, right? Minus 80 loyalty in one turn, then they're just that production is basically halted for the next turn. It's not going to do anything. So whatever they're producing. So if you're just rolling over units, they can't they can't build reinforcements because you're just rolling it over. So that's what that means. That's why it's significant. So what a what a good defense to that. Um, so you have to think about like when you're boarding the Mampuche, would it make more sense to have like encampments not so much forward, but having them a little bit back towards the city? But because then it, you want as many ranged oh. attacks against them as they're moving in towards the city, right? Yes. You want to yeah, you want to I mean that's just general practice, I think. You want to kill as many units as fast as possible and have no units die. So you just like you you make sure everyone like if they if, if Mupuchi advances maybe you just need to back off right just keep backing off and keep sh shooting with ranged and that's like your best defense just yeah, have no saying, units thinking, to die I'm thinking of anything that allows you to have as many ranged attacks at the same time would be best right because yeah you don't want to have your units slam into them and die right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you want to have ranged units or something that can shoot so having an encampment too far forward is actually bad yes because okay be yeah. Surrounded. yeah right mm -hmm. so that, i'm just trying to think of defenses uh, of to, to like <laughs> a, to, to just right? don't put the encampment towards your empire because if mapuchi does take the city then he has a free encampment towards your empire never i'm not thinking be, i'm not thinking like it's behind the city but it's gotta be like maybe only two tiles forward as opposed yeah. to like three yeah yeah that's what i'm yeah. thinking okay yeah yeah Exactly. All right. So let's let's move on to uh, oh, the Maya. Yeah, yeah. The Maya has some interesting changes. Uh, they their farms now receive plus one production for every adjacent observatory. So already it's already like boosted food for being adjacent or sorry, a farm next to an observatory boosts the adjacency science to the observatory. Farms also I think give plus one or plus two gold for Maya. That's just default. And now. Farms next to observatories also get plus one production. Pew, 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 pew. It's pretty good. Then, then this is the big change. Non-capital cities within six tiles, within that six tile range of the Maya's happy zone, we'll call it the happy zone. Uh, they receive a free builder when the city is founded. Fun fact, this stacks with Ancestral Hall. So you can get two builders for just settling one city within six tiles of the Mayan capital. Wow. It's pretty big. It's yeah, pretty, it's big. pretty big. Well, the thing about Maya is that like th so their observatories are not good until you get a builder and, and build a plantation and build a farm. 
So they're like, okay, since they're reliant on having a first builder in your city, let's just give it to them for free. And so this boosts Maya. Wow. The, way it's up a there. significant, like, this is where, like, we were trying to plan for Sunday. Maya's got to be on this list. Like, this mm -hmm. is a significant change. Um, the, uh, the Specifically, the free builder is a significant change. Um, the other plus one productions, hmm, yeah, okay. Uh, the start bias also helps too now that you like very unlikely yeah. to spawn your yeah. post, right? So. Tier one spawn bias to grass, plains, uh, grass hills, and plains hills. Tier two, uh, uh, plantation luxuries, and then all of the terrains are tier three, and that is to discourage coast spawns. So, their coast spawns not even on a tier. So it's very unlikely you'll get coast. Very likely you'll end up in the middle with a ton of grass and tons of hills. It's gonna be good. I, I well, I'm gonna choose Maya and then when we put the game on Sunday. I'm just gonna be like, well, I spawn near coast. <laughs> like, that's, that's gonna happen. I swear, it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, because we're gonna play a Maya Archipelago. Uh, your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mongolia, Zo. Uh, so now. The Ordu gives EXP to siege units. I guess that's the uh, special, but that's what it should have already been that, right? Yeah, yeah, so, pretty much. If any any cavalry building should be giving experience to uh, building siege units. So I guess that was more of a fix than anything. They fix that, yeah. They say that now. The stable will say bonus to cavalry and siege units. They fix Whereas that. Whereas before it was an unwritten thing, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. now it says it. Uh, and here I'll do another short one. Uh, okay. the Netherlands, the Radio Derange domestic trade routes provide plus two loyalty, used to be plus one per turn for the starting city. Trade routes sent or received from a foreign civilization grant plus two culture was plus oh, one. Wow, I didn't know yeah. it was both ways. What and received? Holy, not only goes both ways, you know, they got, a, they got it going on. That's like Egypt's uh, ability, so, but better, in my opinion. They didn't even touch Egypt, which I was surprised. I, yeah, I honestly I thought they, they were gonna they were gonna fiddle with uh Egypt's sticks, but they didn't. Um so yeah, Netherlands and Mongolia. Uh, that's cool for the Netherlands. The stag must do the next two. Next two. So Nubia. So that's my favorite one. Yeah, that's uh, my one of my favorite sibs there. So the Tasseti. Uh, now plus 30% pro production towards ranged units, which is a, a, a nerf, right? So it was 50% before. Um, and then the Nubian period, uh, pyramid um, increases to plus two faith and plus two food. I think it was plus one each, right? I think it was plus one each, yeah. 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 So uh, making the pyramid a little bit better. Um, making Because honestly, they're a special archer. I would just spam those. Right? They're so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> So that makes sense, the the, the difference in production, because you can build them really fast. <laughs> you build any range unit super fast with Nubia. It's insane, man. Like, yeah. you, it's 50%, and then plus you top that with the other policy card that gives you like 100% when or 50%. I, oh I, I was like, I was like one turning all the their special archers. In like three mm -hmm. of my five cities uh, early in the game, I was one turning their archers. You still can. Right? Like I think you still can. So, it's just harder, um, a little bit harder. You just like keep shooting at stuff. That's how you win. Build archers. <laughs> just stuff. keep shooting at stuff. Yeah. Uh, blot out one with your arrows and then win the game. Um, so the Ottoman Empire is the next one. So the Grand Vizier um, has a plus uh, plus one uh, governor tile when gunpowder technology is on. That's so, cool. That is and cool. It's just for him, I'm guessing, right? That, like, no, no, no. Just Grand Vizier is, is what the ability is called. So you just yeah, you just get oh. a title that you can assign anywhere after okay, you just research um, gunpowder. And then the next one, which makes total sense, Niter is now a tier five start bias. So like, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. You, you don't get Niter as like the Ottoman Empire. You're kind of screwed. Um, and so like their whole bet, their standard. It, it would almost be like Rome should get like a start bias for iron, right? Like, yeah, true. Everything. But iron is so common. Done, iron is so common that it's like know, hard to not spawn to. Right. So you need it for your special unit, like the Yanissary. You need it for that for that unit, the Yanissary, to mm -hmm. and they're really yeah. good too. So Tier yeah, five so. though is also not like amazing. So they that get just, one. They get like one. Yeah. And that's they'll, all they need. They'll, they'll be yeah. a gunpowder or or uh niter. But it would uh, be 
really crappy if you got no niter. <laughs> next, you do the next we, two. I, I got it. So next we have Persia. The Paradeza appeal mm -hmm. bonus is now reduced to plus one instead of plus two. Eh, whatever. Moving on. Poland. The Lithuanian Union. So they changed it where taking territory from a foreign city with a culture bomb converts it to the majority religion, not only the religion founded by Poland. So it used to be only the religion founded by Poland. Now, if any religion is majority, then the next city will inherit that religion. That's the change that they made to Poland. Not a lot. They're still scrambled all over the place. But hey, now they can spread religion a little bit easier. Despite if it's theirs or not. So, like, cool. Next, Zo, Russia. Russia. I told you they're going to help Russia get better uh, <laughs> by nerfing them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mother Russia has reduced the number of free tiles in new cities to five. Oh, no. no. It's still like it, it used to be eight. Just so remember, whenever Russia. They get like tons of culture. That is significant. That's tons of, that's, tons a, of land, that's okay. a good nerf. Three three land less. I like that. Uh, that eight bomb is is pretty huge. So good good nerf. Uh, and cer certainly the next one must be a good thing that they're getting. Uh, and then the Lavra moved the great rider point to the shrine. So now it just doesn't give you great rider points. Now it's when you have a shrine you get your great writer points. Mm -hmm. The great artist is now been moved to when you have the temple. So you don't just get great writer and artist anymore when you build one building. <laughs> now it, you have to upgrade but, to the shrine wait, and then but, upgrade to the temple. But the problem always was that Russia never got enough great writers. Wasn't that? You know, yeah, yeah, that was, no. that was Russia's <laughs> great. That was their real big problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then finally, the great mu musician is only if you're a tier, tier three worship, which means that you have either founded a religion or you're worshiping, uh, likely you founded a religion because you're effing Russia. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then you have to actually take, if you want to get the writers, you actually have to take your belief that will, uh, or founder or whatever, that'll get you the tier three building. So Russia got nerfed. <laughs> I think they're pretty good yeah. nerfed too, to be honest. They're, they're good nerfed. They're way they're more fair nerfed. nerfed. Yeah, way more yeah. fair. This just makes so much sense. That's a guess. Yeah. Good Easy change. Fixes. Easy fixes. And it's not, even, it's not even like they like nerfed them to the ground where you can't play them, right? This is like, okay, that's fair. Like, yeah, they're yeah. still Russia. They're still generate a ton of great people. Yeah, like a ton of great artists. That's great. Uh, great people uh, that can work. Confirmed. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Braxis anti Russia bias concern. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like the the from eight to five. You it's still significant. Five is not insignificant. You're still more or less getting um, you know, and it's usually in all directions. Mm -hmm. Um, so there you go. Good, excellent, fantastic. Russia fixed. Do the next one uh, too. Scythia. So your your Kurgans. Plus one faith, plus three gold. Okay, I don't know what it used to make, but now it's plus one faith, plus three gold. Uh, plus one faith for, <coughs> pardon me, each adjacent pastor, becoming plus two when you get stirrups. Okay, so lots Significant. of faith. Significant. Lots of faith. Okay, yeah, for, for each adjacent pastor. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, provides tourism with faith after receiving flight. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's a significant fix, personally. <laughs> what? Really? Still you don't think that's pretty... enough? What are those you want them oh, to wait, do? Wait, 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 hear me out, hear me out. My problem with Scythia has nothing to do with its power and everything to do with it's, an, it's a boring sieve to play. Okay. Uh, that's my beef with Scythia. I just find that like after their little initial cavalry perk, it's like, okay, so this is my game now. This is what I'm doing. This is... I'm building cavalry now. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I just I've always just found them a yawn. As I said, I'm not saying they're not strong. You know, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. They're just yeah. it's boring. Um, so I don't think Scythia has moved up in my tier list of fun factor, which is the only tier list that matters. But at least they made the one thing that was really terrible about them not terrible. Yeah, and giving them the gold means 
because uh, they're going to have Kurgans in all of their cities. Kurgans in all their cities, right? Uh, or they should. They should uh, yeah. That's going to let them actually be able to support this massive army um, that they've got. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's at least decent. It's still Yonfest for me because, great, I can, oh, I can support more horses. <laughs> Ooh, great. Um, so Scythia, more or less unchanged. Like, sure, it's better. Uh, but it's still a yawn fest for for Zoe at least. Nystagmus. Now, now, Nystagmus, you can't, you cannot say the next one without singing a little song first, right? About right. your your previous life. Oh, I got yeah? it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you know about your previous. Remember your previous life? But now you no. eat humble pie. You don't. You don't remember. Your you don't previous remember your life? unspeakable wife, Queen Lisa. Nope. Once oh, you shit. were the king of Spain, now no, you eat, eat humble, humble pie. Miss <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. um, I declare you the ruiner. Yeah, I'm not the ruiner, ruiner. of anything. I'm also going to acknowledge. Thanks uh, for the raid, Peppermint Butler. Um, hey, hey. He's going to be joining us on Sunday for the next game as well. So definitely check that out, all his viewers who want to uh, uh, watch Peppermint Butler kick our butts next week. Uh, or this week, sorry, uh, coming up. Uh, but Spain. So Spain's one of the other ones I got pretty a lot of big changes so treasure fleet which is kind of what they're known for uh, when the age of uh discovery started and um, um in the early modern era so fleets and armadas can be formed with mercantilism mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to nationalism and mobilization uh trade routes receive plus three gold plus two faith and plus one production uh, trade routes between multiple continents receive triple these numbers. Triple, triple cities, triple not your, <laughs> cities not on your original capital continent. Triple the stag- production. <laughs> triple, did you say production. triple? Triple, the stagmus, you're, you're breaking up. Did you did you say triple? I did. I said it once. Awesome guys. Um, <laughs> so you receive plus 25 products production towards districts in a, in a, in a builder when founded. So you get a builder now if you found cities, not on your, yeah, original. on other uh, continents. That's key on other, on other continents. continents. Yeah. Yeah. On your not, on your not original capitals continent. Um, L S Coral, uh, inquisitors can remove, uh, heresy, uh, heresy for one extra time. Mm-hmm. Inquisitors eliminate 100% of the presence of other religions. Huge. Combat religious <laughs> units have plus five combat strength against players following other religions. Huge. So that's that's huge for religious combat. So awesome oh, for them. Yeah. Um, all rule sets now feature the buffed Gathering Storm version of the mission. So <laughs> plus two faith, plus two, uh, two faith additionally, plus one food and plus one production if on a different continent than your capital. <laughs> plus one science for every adjacent campus and holy site. Plus two science once cultural heritage is discovered. It uh, is discovered. Uh, the loyalty bonus is still rise and fall and gathering storm only. That is crazy, so man. So, that mission is nuts on another continent. What? Um, wow. And then the other two things are kind of like just removing the coast start bias, and now the geothermal is now a tier three start bias. Which I'm not really sure about that, but I guess. I so geothermal of... geothermals only only happen on continent splits. So they're more likely to spawn near two continents. That's what that okay. that's it's that's significant. That yeah. Mm. Wait, so aren't geothermal sites also next to volcanoes usually too? No. No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. They are only the spawned only goes next so far, to a continent split. So So okay. it's like um it's definitely like Bane is kind of a little bit different. Like they, it looks like they changed one or two little tiny weeny teensy things, and now it's a completely different sieve. Uh, it's completely different. Like, oh my god, it's, it's huge! Complete, it's so good. Obviously, obviously, I'm joking. Uh, oh, this is like a massive changeover. This is a, a complete facelift. This is possibly the worst sieve in the game. Um. Used and they've, they've now this is yeah now this is like a legit contender like these abilities to me it's it just that they're so multilateral like trade routes all your trade routes being that much better is great um triple the bonuses like you know already when you're going continent to continent it's already generally a really good trade bonus uh now mind you it's these numbers are tripled right so it's plus nine plus two, 
plus three. Um, but that's still like trade route production is usually pretty small. Mm-hmm. I think honestly, Portugal coming out, they're like, okay, well, Spain and Portugal were like at each other's throats, right? Like you got to have that these two sibs can actually somewhat hold each other at bay. You can't have that Portugal would just dominate Spain if they were actually side by side. Um, I think that had a big. Would that be like maybe to remove the the coast start bias because wouldn't like Portugal if they could trade with Spain? Um. <laughs> well, I think because because Spain like before it, before Byzantium and before Portugal, Spain was that like a oh, religious combat, but also naval combat. Um, but then like Portugal came out and it's like, oh, Portugal's really good at trading. It's like okay, so Spain like. No one's going to pick Spain. Why pick Spain when you pick Portugal? And then Byzantium yeah. came out. Why pick Spain when you can pick Byzantium? So now Spain's like unique. It's it it it, it turned into its own butterfly. It flourished, and now it's flying away independently, fluttering. Yeah, you like that? It's that. <laughs> I don't, no, these are these are awesome changes. Uh, Spain. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing them. So they, you still can't link a religious unit and a combat unit, by the way. Just heads up. What? <laughs> One of the comments in the in the chat, Nystagmus has a comment start bias. <laughs> that's, a good one. that's a good one i like how that's become a meme it happened like in one game and now it's a meme because he yeah, wouldn't shut up about work. it nystagmus it was mean uh the game was mean to me <laughs> like right, triple next. mean triple 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 was it triple mean nystagmus triple it was only next. double mean but that's still, that's still pretty bad Oh my <laughs> next we have some i'm just gonna cover the next three uh next we have samaria so adventures of Enkaidu. uh they added a plus five combat strength to units when they and their ally are at war with a common foe so now you like you want gilgamesh to be your friend at all times it's just always bonuses bonus uh combat strength bonus xp bonus pillage yields you and gilgabro are best friends you want to go to war Gilgabro. with each other Gilga, bro. Next, we have Vietnam. The the tan or the th- I don't tan, tan. I want to say tan. It no longer provides the great general points. <gasps> yeah, that they had to do that. They had to do that. It was it was silly. It was it silly. was big. How yeah. crazy the defense got when you've got all the generals kicking around. Uh, you know, and and you've got this in every city because you have to have it in every city. Obviously, it's a free district. Like that doesn't it doesn't count against you. You're gonna have this in your city. If you don't have it in your city, well, you don't know the meaning of triple. Um, so yeah, like obviously this is a good thing. Um, but th- it's interesting for a sib that just came out like such a big nerf. You know, it's, it's like, not a Oop. big nerf. It's not a big nerf because you still build the stable. You get so you still build a stable. You get the great general point. It's just not with the unique building yeah, anymore. Like, That's it. They, I found that Vietnam stole all the generals very early. Yeah, no, they, they can't do that. And that's totally fine. That's significant. That's a big shift of power. I think that one little change, uh, I think it's a good change. I'm just saying that it's because it's so new, you know, what was the initial thought? They're like, well, obviously, we'll have this free district generate general points, obviously. Mm. Uh, you know, and and that was not the right move because, yeah, it just, uh, they're, they, I think we did the math. Like, wasn't their elephant like plus eight or nine movement with the right general? What? You plus know, two? Like, well, no, like plus three, no, I think. Like, no, no, no. It's yeah, plus one from the general, plus two from a jungle. And then general, I think plus jungle, one default. So f- okay, that's seven plus, movement, plus, I think. Seven movement. Seven. Still, I bet you could squeeze another in there. Um, you know, too easy for already a fantastic sieve. It didn't need it. it they didn't need the general. They didn't need it. So fair. Glad no, it's fair. And then the Zulu, the last uh, civilization change in this patch, uh, they they introduced where their buildings in the Ikonda, their unique encampment, also receive plus two gold and plus one science. Very, very interesting. So the does that mean uh, the barracks, the armory, and like the military academy all generate plus two? gold and plus one science so plus six gold plus three science at the end of that it's pretty like good that, 
it's interesting. It, well, it's it, like that's what it I was thinking me. originally. I was thinking about like the military academy. I was like, oh, so this is like going on the theme. It's a little earlier because I don't. Uh, I think the one um, where you get um, ports and um, uh, give you plus to science. So there's a policy card. Oh, that lets free inquiry. Your, yeah, free inquiry. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a golden age policy. Your, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. There is a red policy card that plus two science for all of your oh um, renaissance your support, walls your, seaports and military academies yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes yes so yes yes like, yes yes like, oh, it's kind of playing on that but you get a little earlier because i think it's the level two one it's not the barracks it's the one that comes after the armory i think gives it gives it to you no um, then, well, well no the third academy. one it's the third one military academy exactly, seaport yeah. also the third one um, renaissance wall also I'm, the third one i sometimes will take that if i'm if, especially if i'm a domination saver oh, really? well, i got well i got 10 i got 10 cities and yeah, they're they're totally rocking ports, and and it can be a significant science bonus. Now this is not super significant, but um, it 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 gives them a little bit of play wiggle room. You know, if they are going domination, having that little bit of extra gold lets them support the bigger army. And then you know, even a plus one science, all things being equal, early on, this is one of the first buildings you're making. Um, you know that it, it's no, you're not going to be science leader. But that's going to stop you from falling behind a bit, too, uh, just because you're, you're likely every city you build is going to have uh, have this building in it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I like I, I like anything where they say, let's put plus two gold on it. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> OK, so there's we just got through the sieves and like, holy crap, um, we're going to skim through this part. OK, sure. we're going to skim through uh the balanced units basically tldr uh they rebalance all this combat strength for all of the melee units so that's a plus 10 increment per evolution of, of melee unit by default so like think of it that way uh they boosted every unique melee unit by three so everything just got boosted by three if it's like the ingao and beba the the unique unit to congo the hippopist for a alexander plus it says plus two, but I thought I heard on the stream plus three. Uh, the Immortals actually get a plus five to their melee strength. Wait. Yep, yeah, plus five to their yeah, melee strength. Five. So they're even stronger. Immortals are stronger? What? Why? What do you mean it makes sense? <laughs> what? They are sense. insane. It makes sense. See, I again, I see it from the historical perspective. Oh, Immortals were... Okay were actually like super well-trained private army of of um um the the emperor in persia okay right so like they were raised from like they, they were taken from like birth to be trained their entire lives oh become. interesting so kind of like um, the uh, i don't remember in game of thrones like what gray worm was a part of uh whatever that was called um right but like I was yeah, actually hoping that would make their range strength better because actually what immortals were known for was their their short bow that they used because right. they can actually shoot like there were like things where they were proving that pe uh, immortal soldiers can jump in the air and shoot like three arrows rapid fire with the um with the short bow and so it was kind of cool like that that kind of thing but that makes but sense then, completely. but then wouldn't historically they would have less of a chance like they would be worse at close range combat or like, so then historically wouldn't 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 the be worse than swordman be a be a thing no because right now they're on they're on equivalent they're, they're equivalent to swordman now in melee strength equivalent exactly yeah, the same. that makes sense but their right. whole thing is that because they can attack with the range they're not taking damage back for that right yeah so yeah. so that's that's their edge so it, um, it was common for like if you were fighting an immortal you like regiment they would shoot at you as you were like running at them right so mm -hmm. okay that makes sense if you're fighting a swordsman right they should be just as strong as a swordsman because they're, they're swordsmen that they can shoot arrows okay because they're well-trained units there's there's basically uh shock troopers got right? it got it so they're just the best at everything they're athletic yeah they're simply the best there weren't always Better a lot of all the right <laughs> like there was both i think i think the persian empire maintained like an army of like two thousand of them at any given point okay they were like right. basically the, they were basically like the the emperor's like um uh personal bodyguard so i'm getting a confirmation from carl that the unique anytime there's a unique unit that replaces another unit 
it's plus three above the unit it replaces. That's the confirmation. Okay. Uh, so that's what it um, is. And the other big one was the samurai. So samurai, I think you can mm. get earlier. He, right? And in the culture tree, dude, feudalism's. Yeah. Oh no, 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 military tactics was culture too. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I gotta. I'll, I'll double check that one second. Um, yeah. Which, which again makes sense historically because samurai were um, basically like the equivalent in Europe would be a knight. So they were they were part of feudal Japan. They were part of feudal Japan's uh, hierarchy. Samurai were. So it makes sense that they would be unlocked with feudalism. Okay. I'm not I, I know that probably wasn't like the historical context that they wanted to do it, but that I that makes cool sense for me in my head when I see it. So military tactics. Feudalism's in the medieval era. Military tactics was a science. Yeah. It's, military tactics is a science. And that was when you got the pikemen. So now they moved it to the culture tree. There you go. Samurai. Get it with culture. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Uh, anyway, that's... We're going to skip through that part. Uh, we're going to... The range, they made them better. Uh, they made the machine yeah. gun Machine guns better. are useful now. <laughs> then we have the siege units. So catapults are a little bit better on melee by two. So they're 25 instead of 23. The domri, which is what the replaces the trebuchet, is actually kind of significantly better than the trebuchet 40 melee strength instead of 33 and the bombard's a little bit stronger and the rocket artillery is also a little bit stronger uh do you want me to keep going or does anyone else want to take over for anti-cav like okay, yeah, okay. so pikemen uh they're a little bit stronger by four so 45 instead of 41 uh the mp which um is like the zulu's a unique unit so they are actually stronger as well um the eight the at crew um, they're increased as well, which I like too, because I didn't really use them a whole lot either. Um, the modern at crew also increased and nice. the hoplite. So the hoplite got a boost as well. And in, in oh addition my to God, all the stuff we get. Jesus, so, dude. Awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like how everything like needed it, Moy. It needed it. Oh, every, yeah, almost yeah, everything's definitely. stronger. Like every unit is basically stronger by a little bit, um, which is awesome. Okay, like chat's said, telling me to go back to the then... Berserker. Hold on. Chat's telling me to go back to the Berserker. This got changed, too. This is Norway's unique unit. So the combat strength was 40. Now it's 48. Huge difference. And then it gets minus 5 combat strength when defending. Uh, it only applies to melee attacks. So when they get attacked by ranged, they're still really good. Actually, yeah, that's a big change. Holy crap. Holy smokes. These used to be glass cannons. They, they can do a lot of damage, but they take a lot of damage. Now they don't take as much as they did. Okay, and Berserkers. They, and, they do, and they do more damage now. They do a significant amount more damage. Like 48 instead of 40. That's huge, That's, man. That is a lot. That's almost like a 25% increase. 20% increase. And uh, I think for the light cavalry, the most important unit in the entire thing is the Mountie. Um, <laughs> yeah, now true. has a combat strength of 62 instead of 60, um, and has an additional national park charge, and it costs uh, almost half as much as it used to. So that's kind of cool. Almost half. So what? It's it's it rounded. It's 300 instead of 400. Well, I I round like if it's a 290, so it's it's a it's like a 35 percent decrease or 38 percent decrease. Okay, fine. I'll give you that. So it's closer to 50 percent than it is the other way around. Okay, okay, right. okay, fine, fine. Um, sure. So that's pretty cool. Um, Are you going to build national parks, be both of you? I don't know if any of you build national parks. Nope. They don't Do you know exist how? in my world. No. Do you actually not know how? I know how to build a national park, okay? I just choose not to build them. <laughs> Can I challenge that? You build a natural park on a diamond tile. So like where there's like four tiles beside each other that are uh, un untouched by stuff. What are the requirements? Uh, within your territory. Four identical things. Okay. So is, that is, mountains, is that the only requirement? You can build forest. them on any tile otherwise? Um can't be developed can't have anything on them have to be within your empire i don't know any other anything else is insignificant appeal, right <laughs> yeah. so charming or breathtaking appeal only and all four of those tiles need to be within one city 
They cannot be yeah. split between two cities. There you go. Boom. So they're gonna so build already Nazo. super hard. Big deal. Whoop de doo. <laughs> so this is a big deal, man. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is a huge two national parks from a melee or not melee from a military unit. You can build military and get culture and get tourism. And they change tourism. We can go through that later. Not that you is, care, is so, but the rest really of the world. Is really a military will. unit, though? Like, yes. It's well, a military unit in the game, but is it really a military unit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess We all no, know no, what it not. really is. <laughs> uh, what about the heavy cavalry? Anything unique here uh, the, in the... The RU doesn't upgrade to uh, a tank anymore. So you can't turn elephants into tanks. Oh, uh, well, okay. So the, you you could turn them into the next step, and then from that next step, you could turn them into tanks. So the you could you can you don't have to skip a step anymore with the Varu. Uh, actually, no, this is significant. The winged winged Hussar, holy crap! The combat strength was increased to sixty four. It was fifty five before. They increased it by nine, nine, and it's unlocked with mercantilism instead of mercenary. I think that's it, earlier it too. It takes longer to build them though. Ah, like, and the like maintenance is increased. Oh, interesting. A sideways movement. So okay, so they, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. That's fine. I think um, they come at a better time. So they make them better. Uh, I think they'll last longer. I remember when I played Poland, I just I felt like the Winged Hussars didn't last long enough. So I think that's a really good change. Really yeah, like before that. They're out, before they're out tacked, right? So. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, uh range the next most important thing. Where are the warrior monks? Oh, there they are. <laughs> this is significant. <gasps> this is, I think, I think Carl stepped in and was like, guys, I gotta prove to Moy that these things are great. Wait, where is we it? Got where, a, where? It's a plus five. It's under it's not under or uh other. They're they're oh, they have other. 40 strength instead of 35. 40 yeah. strength. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Plus five. You know, if if you're the Greeks. Oh with, my god, uh, the all your policy cards, and then if you go the That's religious true. game, and uh, yeah, they, they might just be the most powerful unit in the game. Uh, just to point out though, uh, Chad is pointing out, um, Wing Tessars come later, not earlier. Yeah, I think that's why they're better. Yeah, so that makes sense. That's why they, they have like a significant in combat, so you just get you get them later, so you get them after Pikeman, I guess. So that so they, they should hypothetically defeat Pikeman. I like that change. But back to the warrior monk, yeah, baby, let's go. Anyway, <laughs> they're terrible. I still think they're going to be terrible, but at least, <laughs> and at least they can sustain. I think they can sustain. So, like, if you do this to kill your closest neighbor and you upgrade to upgrade these warrior monks, the upgrades on these are really good. So, hoping maybe we can, uh, I can, I could show how good they are. I'm hoping. Anyway. Uh, we're gonna go to the general gameplay fixes. Anything important in here? Not really. Oh, this is a big one. That's a lot of these issues. This is a big one. I, this I felt this one all the time. Idle governors now must be addressed before advancing to your next turn. Thank God. I don't know about you guys. If my if 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 I neutral if somebody neutralized my governor. I wasn't putting that governor back until yeah, I got another usually. title. I totally or, forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, you just forget about it. <laughs> I, I found it to be very common. Yeah, people also mentioned the other big one is the U-boat doesn't need oil anymore. That is big. Yes. That's a U-boat buff, baby. Hey. There you go, Germany. You knew you get the buff you needed. <laughs> uh, anything else in here? No. No, okay. I'm gonna we're gonna keep going. This is big. This is a big one, and I would like to. Uh, so, actually, you explain this one. Tourism updates. Please go through the tourism updates. You want me to go through the tourism updates? I, I do, and I want you to explain okay. to me why it's significant. All right. So, culture cultural domination. The term has been clarified in cultural victory section of the world rankings and civilopedia. Cultural di uh, domination provides ongoing effects, and they are as follows. International trade routes to foreign cities you culturally dominate pl provide plus four gold. Spy missions in foreign cities you culturally dominate are 50% faster to complete. Your citizens exert 25% more loyalty pressure on foreign cities you 
culturally dominate. So now they've taken domination of culture and they said, well, let's apply, you know, instead of conquering their cities with your armies, you're conquering them with your culture. You should get a little, a little wet your beak a little as Mm -hmm. it were. And that's exactly what they've done. So there you go. Makes it makes culture victory a little easier to understand for those of us that what? Uh, don't what do you want mean? to. What? How is it easier because, to understand? Because now you have something to shoot for. It's like, oh, I want that cultural domination uh, for all these perks that I'm getting. And not okay. because it's a poorly um, assembled Frankenstein of a win condition. So I've been asked to ask you, are you going to learn how to win a culture victory now with this change? You've been asked to ask me? Who I asked you that? Uh, um, I'm going to name them nameless. I uh, Well, because Canada has been so significantly affected, you know, Canada is a culture sieve. So um, that that should answer your question. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else is significant in this pack. Oh, they, um, they nerfed him, Himiko. Uh, Bose is very and, sad about this. Oh man. And they, uh, they nerfed Simbad too. They did. They did nerf Simbad. 200 gold instead of 300, uh, for naval rating and 400 gold instead of 500 for discovering a new continent. That's what Simbad's changes are. Uh, what else in here? Do, 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 do. Uh, vampires don't get the benefit of ignoring walls uh, adjacent to siege yeah. towers. I noticed that. I, I noticed they didn't get they don't they don't get it from battering rams. Even before this patch, they never got it from battering rams. And so, I guess changing the bat uh, the siege tower, I guess, is now in line with what they wanted to do with the vampires. So I I guess that's a good change. But I'm sad about it. Anyway. Uh, we have next, I think, oh, okay. Do you want to just go straight to AI right at the end? Sure. All right. Yeah. That's important for me. Cause I was, I, I got really pissed. Go about for it. Just say, this is, this is all you buddy. Yeah. All so, you. Uh, improved ability for naval units to heal. So they'll actually do it. Um, cities will no longer build ships for future operations. If they're on a lake, thank God. Like, I don't know if I remember. This is back in the. This is like the uh, the old days in the Civ show, man. We played a game. It was it, we were we were trying to like you know play a multiplayer game, and we had us have an ally. I got Harold from Norway, and he didn't spawn on the coast. I don't know why. Um, and he spawned near lakes, and he kept building cities near lakes, even though he had coast that was near him to spawn. And all he did was build longboats in lakes to go nowhere. Um, so that he was. Meanwhile, uh, Zoe's ally, Pericles, won the game all by himself. So that was awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you don't like these lake boats? You don't like your ally building lake boats all game? Come on. Really? Deity uh, level he, AI building lake boats was, all game? He was, uh, he was such a useless AI, uh, <laughs> ally. It was so bad. <laughs> uh, and lastly, they increased the desire for districts and improvements. Those are all the significant changes in this April update. There's a lot to go through. If you want to go through them yourself, there will be a link in the show notes and in the YouTube description if you're watching this on YouTube. Anything else you guys want to mention before we wrap it up? Uh, just that, like, obviously reading it doesn't do it justice you have to get out there and play um and uh, try everything out and and see how everything works um like yeah we didn't even talk about like barbarian clans is like what like 50 fixes that they've oh, yeah, they've added to it <laughs> yeah um, yeah I mean, so i think, I think we, you just get out there and play obviously that's the point um and then uh, figure it out for yourself uh, but yeah, some of these obviously are going to have a bigger impact. Like Camer now is, you know, seemingly playable. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, as I believe on Sunday, we're going to have a short list of possible plays. So uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing just how the rollout, like how does the community respond to this? How does, um, you know, Civ League and stuff respond to this? How will this affect stuff when when you have the, the 10,000 game factor where you just have these, all these people playing. Um, So yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but significant 
Um, and I'm sure that it was play tested very thoroughly and there, there were no little things that anyone will catch playing it the tens of thousands of times. So well done. Uh, <laughs> well done. Stim team. <laughs> there is a unwritten, uh, addition to the game. I don't know if you guys heard of this. You can pet the dog in civilization. You can, you can pet the dog. You, it, I, it, I heard, it, I heard this. You build a scout. You open up the additional things, like how you delete a unit and auto explore. And there's an option to pet the dog with your scout. There you go. Wow. Um, Best I think change. That's what we've all, all needed. Uh, it was really funny, time. though. So, Kevin Schultz released the emails, his emails that he emailed, like the design team, two years ago. Asking if, hey, can you add something where we can pet the dog? This was in 2019. And it finally got implemented. <laughs> That's all it took? You can't it's pet the cat. It's no one can pet the cat. You can never pet the cat. Don't ever pet the cat. There is no petting of the cat. There shall be yeah. no petting of the cat. No, that's not, that's not a joke either. Yeah, you, you, if you have the cat mod... You can't pet the cat. Like it says, like no, you, no one, nobody pets cats. That's what it says, I think, or something like that. Or like only psychopaths uh, pet cats. I don't think it says that. I think I think the email said that. But it's true. Can't pet the cat, but you can pet the dog. Fun fact. Wor words to live by, people. You can't pet the cat, but you can pet the dog. So that's, uh, that's it for tonight. Take it away. So, uh, speaking of taking it away and cats and trees and cats eating birds, uh, Moy, why don't you tell us about that nest you've been growing? The nest we've been growing, it's four, we have 400 followers on Twitter. Did you know that? That's a lot of followers on Twitter. That's pretty crazy. More from zero, from zero, a year know, ago. Like, come on. This, we're kind of a big deal. People it's kind of a big us. deal. People know us. <laughs> Anyways, if you haven't followed our Twitter, you, you you should. It's where you can get all your civilization and the Civ Show updates. We wanna you wanna know what we're doing on our weekly basis. Follow us on Twitter at the Civ Show. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Nystagmus, I hear you've been capturing the little birds that are falling out of Moy's nests and putting them into little test tubes. How's that working? Yes, uh, they're. Working great, as well as you can imagine putting birds in the test tubes work. Uh, <laughs> you can check out our uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, if you miss our streams, never fear. You can always check them out. All the VODs are uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, we also have other um, uh, great content that you can check out as well. So we have the raising reviews with, uh, with Zoe. Moy does reaction videos on almost everything in the civilization community. And I have, I promise, my Better Know Leader series that's continuing. It has not gone away. I'm just uh, taking my time with the next episode. So definitely check that out. Give us a subscribe and ring the bell. Ring that bell. Ring that. You know, uh, speaking of ringing that bell, uh, I just want to say, uh, boys, it's it's a pleasure being back in good company. Uh, it's been a long time since the three of us have all been together, I feel. Um, so very, very good. And looking forward to uh, our, our, our games moving forward. Uh, and I believe on Sunday we have Peppermint Butler on the show. So, Absolutely, uh, yeah. That's going to be a good time. So just uh, I know – with school and illness and all that stuff, it's I've been a crazy time, but it feels great being back in in the seat with you too. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, speaking of being back in the seat, though, if you're looking for the more intimate connection to the Civ Show, you can join <laughs> us on our Discord. It is the watering hole of the Civ Show community, from pet picks to Civ Chat to everything in between great bunch of people uh best friends you'll ever meet okay join us on our discord and then of course uh in theory we've been kind of hiatus with this but we're gonna get back in the groove now that bc's figured out its uh internet issues uh <laughs> we now have five days of civ show fun for you 
The week begins on Sundays at 1030 or sorry, at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Whoa, Time. Buddy. Yeah, I know. Eh? Um, here on Twitch TV. Uh, then we've got afternoon tea with Nystagmus, Mondays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good morning amenities with yours truly, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. And then, of course, Moy at night in the night, believe it or not, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday evenings. And then our week's wrap-up here on the Civ podcast where we suck so you don't have to. I hope you enjoyed our cast today of all of these updates. And uh, beyond that, I believe we'll see everybody on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, as we raid foibles. Everyone loves foibles. So thanks again, everybody. Say goodnight, boys. Good night. Good night.